Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality, and in this video, we're going to go through the Playwright VS Code extension. So you might be thinking, what is it? It's a way of installing Playwright Test. Uh, if you haven't seen my setup video, I suggest you pause the video now. I'll put a link uh, somewhere on the screen to my setup video, and you can use the VS Code extension to set up Playwright because you're going to need a folder structure similar to this to follow along with uh, this video. It's also a way of creating, executing, and debugging tests from inside Visual Studio Code, and it's typically done with one or two clicks of a button. So how do we install uh, the extension? So in VS Code, you want to click on the Extensions tab and search for Playwright. Now you're going to have a few come up, and you want to search for the, or you want to select the Playwright test from VS Code, and it's authored by Microsoft. I already have this installed, but you're going to see an Install button here. And you want to click the install, and once that's complete, you're ready to go. Okay, great. So with that installed, then we now have uh, a new tab appear, which is called testing. This comes from the extension we just installed. Now, if you have the same setup with me, you're going to see that you have the test folder, then the example spec, and you have all the tests that live inside, it, and even the groups that they live in. So the new to do tests live inside here. Now, to make things simple, I'm going to be removing the projects from the config file. But before I do that, I just want to show you what happens. If I click the drop down at the top, what you're going to see is all my projects are listed. And we can select what we want to, what project we want to use to run the tests. We can also select what default profile we want to use. So when we click the run button, we don't have to keep selecting the project. Now, like I said, to make things simple, I'm going to be removing these and we're not going to have uh, any project other than the Chromium, so we won't have that op option to to change them. So if I just comment those out, and now I go to testing, what we're going to see if I refresh this is there's no option now. So you can see here, it's just going to run the one Chromium project because we don't have any others. So if you want to follow along with this, I'd suggest doing the same and commenting out the Firefox and WebKit projects. So it's simple to execute tests. You can either click on the top level folder, which will execute everything, or you can choose to click on individual files. In this case, I'm going to run all from the top, or I could have selected it here and run the test. So I'll click the top run test, and we'll expect all of these to start executing. You can see how they nested inside the file, and then you've got it nested inside each described block. So it's a really nice way of ordering your tests. Um, I'm going to speed up the video so you can see the tests running and passing. So if you're in the same state as me, you should get to the point where all of your tests run and all of your tests pass. So we can see immediately here that they start to run. And also, if you notice here, it's giving you a step-by-step -step of where it's actually stepping through. Now, my machine is running quite slow today. You sh yours might be a lot quicker than this and speed through the steps. But as they start running, you should notice that it's going to walk through the steps. So at the moment, it's still on the before each, and it's highlighting this, and it's waiting for it. And now it's stepping through each locator. And as you can see, as it goes through, the tests are passing. So I'm going to speed up the rest. Awesome. So if you're in the same state as I, you should see now that all of the tests have passed. You can drop down into them and have a look at each test. Now, I've shown you how you can run via this way using the actual testing tab. But if I just close this file, Another neat feature is the ability to jump to specific tests. So I'm going to pick on this one. I can click on it and then click go to test or hit alt enter. And that will take me directly to where the test is. You can run tests from inside here as well. So you can click this to run the test or you can right click and you can choose to run or debug. So if I run this one again now, we should see once again, it's going to run as normal. It's only going to run this one rather than all of the groups selected because we nested down into each individual test. Just let my slow machine catch up with us. It's kicking off now. And once again, it'll be the same where you'll be able to follow the execution of the steps going all the way through. So we can see it's highlighted on the before each statement. So it's waiting to move through. And as I scroll down in the test, we can see exactly where it went. And it was so quick, but it went through each line and it's marked as passed again. What I want to do now is break the test so I can show you how it outputs a failure message. So sticking to the same test we were working on, I'm going to change the locator here from a class of view to views in the hope that the test is going to fail. So let's execute this again by clicking the button and let it run through. And we'll wait to see what happens 
when it hits this line 20. We can expect it to wait for, I think the default is five seconds, and then it's gonna throw out an error message for us. Okay, so we've hit this point and now it's trying to wait. And we should see an error message pop up soon to give us uh, what's gone wrong. So we can see here, error, we expected receive to have the text of the expected. So going down, expected is buy some cheese, but we've received an undefined. And our log down here has told us we tried to wait five seconds, uh, but we couldn't find the selector. Um, it resolved to zero elements. And we know that's because I purposely changed that. Now, what you can do is you can click off this, you can click away, you can click the X button, and that will uh, minimize it for you. Now, if you want to go back to the error and look at it, you just click back on it and you're fine. If you want to clear all the errors, you can just click clear all the results, and that will get rid of everything so you don't have the red marks and uh, you can start playing around again. Staying with the broken test, this is a good time to show you how we can debug using this extension. So we know this is the problem. Imagine it's run through and we want to see why. How can we test this on the fly to see why my locator is not being found? This is a really good way of making use of the debugging in the uh, Playwright Visual Studio Code extension. So I'm going to add a breakpoint onto this line because we know this is where it's failing. Now if I want to debug, I can right click on the button here and say debug test. I can also right click on the test or if I just look here, Hovering over this, so next to the um, execute test button, you've got the debug test. Or if you wanted to do it for a group of them, once again, you've got the option of debugging up here or selecting on the group to debug the test. Considering you're debugging and you're probably going to be adding breakpoints to the test, it's more than likely you add a breakpoint and then you right click and debug. So what's going to be different when we debug? It's going to load up the browser in headed form. It's going to stop on the breakpoint and we're going to be able to change the locator on the fly to see how we can target specific elements. I can see that the browser has loaded for me now. It's on my other screen, so I'll just drag that across. And at the moment, you're not seeing anything. You're not seeing anything highlighted. And we're on the breakpoint and we know we're not seeing anything highlighted because we're actually finding the wrong locator. Now we know this needs to be view. So if I just change this to view, And then I reopen my instance of the browser. What we're going to see is it's going to actually highlight the locator. So there we are. Now we can see view label has been found and we've got the right locator. So at this point, I can stop the test uh, and I can save the changes, rerun the test, and we know it's been found and we're good to go and carry on. And in this case, this is the last line of the code. So that test will pass. So you can click the stop button and then you can change it and re-update. We talked about execution, we talked about debugging, but I also mentioned that the extension allows you to create tests as well. So to do this, we're gonna go over to the test tab again, and at the top, you've got the record playwright test button. So we will click this, and what's happened now is a new test file has been created, test1spec.ts. This has been stored inside our test directory as well, and it's going to spin up a browser for us and record anything we do on that browser instance. With that popped up now, I'm just going to go to amazon.co.uk. And I'll hit enter when that loads. With that loaded, I'm going to say click the accept cookies button, and then I'm going to close down the test. And here we go, we've just created our first test without needing to write any code. Now, there are limitations with using this approach. Of course, it records everything that you're doing on that web page. So if you're clicking around, it's going to be recording it. But also, when you want to create a reliable and resilient test pack, it's not great to rely on these kind of auto code generated tools. Now, it can be good to find specific elements or find a way of how do I perform a double click, but I would highly recommend that you don't use these to build up your entire test pack. There's a few other things I wanted to touch on that will make your life a little bit easier using this extension. The first is going to be filtering. So nice and simple. I'm going to add commit call to this test and save it. Now going back to the test tab, I can filter for this specific test just by the name of it. So let's say commit quality. It could be the full name of the test or it could be part of it. And what we see now, it's only showing this one test that has the commit quality added to it. 
Now, if I remove this, we should see all the tests reappear. Uh, you've got the option here to filter by other things or only show specific tests. So you might want to only show your failed tests to rerun those and debug those, or maybe only an executed. You've got the option to show only what's in your active file, and you've got fuzzy match. Now, you've got show hidden and hide, and hide all tests as well. So one thing you can do is if I didn't want to see this test that was auto-generated, I could say hide test. And now it doesn't appear. You can see this is highlighted now and we can click on it and we can now unhide all of our tests or we can show our hidden tests. So I'm going to click unhide all tests and this comes back for me. You can also change the layout of your tests as well. So by clicking the three dots up here, we've got extra options. So we can sort by duration, we can sort by status, we are at the moment, sort, sort by location. But we've also got the way of viewing. So I personally prefer viewing as a tree. So like I said, it's showing you your test file and then it digs down into the tests and even the described statements. So you've got the described block here, the annotation here, and then the test living inside it. But if you want to change this to just have a list view, you can do that by clicking list and that will just show all of your tests for you. I'm just going to put that back because I personally prefer viewers tree. Now, you might have noticed the collapse all tests. So if you're digging down into a lot of things, if you have a lot of tests, this can obviously become quite messy. And if you want to put it back to its original state, all you have to do is click on collapse all tests and it puts it back to that original state for you. Another thing you can do is clear all your results. So you might have run these tests. Um, you might have had some failures and then you might have had some pass and you want to rerun them all again. Um, obviously, you can rerun and it'll set it back to the state. Or if you want it to be nice and clean, you can click on the clear all results and that will get rid of all of your previous test runs. And that's another way of getting rid of those um, error messages that you see uh, highlighted in red when we went through the debugging section. Sometimes as well, you might have problems with tests not appearing here. So there's a refresh button, which you can click here and it'll make sure this updated everything to all your saved files. And you should have the latest version of what you've been working on then. Last but not least, we have this uh, show output button as well. Now that's disabled because of course I haven't run any tests. But if I was to just run this test that we auto generated, we'll see after it's run, we'll have the show output highlighted so here we are it's kicking it off now if i click on this we can see the terminal here and it's saying test output so any errors you see or anything at all it's going to catch it it's going to tell you if your test has passed it's going to tell you what's going on with your test and it's just a nice way to view um, the output during test or after the execution with that passed we can now see as well one pass then it's giving you your playwright report as well and that's it for the Playwright extension. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment and I'll reply to them as soon as I can. And uh, stay tuned for my Playwright videos coming up. Thank you and have a good day.